This week's episode is brought to you by the Disney Project Podcast, the second greatest online show. You can check them out at thedisneyproject.com. Oh, oh, Jeff, wait, wait. Keith's check never cleared. He sent us another check that bounced? Are you kidding me? Are you, well, are you, uh, Keith, you're going to go down to the third greatest, maybe even the fourth greatest online show. Hello and welcome to Communicore Weekly. I'm George. And I'm Jeff. George, you didn't say we're the greatest online show. You always say that. Well, I was going to wait for you to come in and say it this time. Fear, give the listeners a break. Their oh. ears are probably getting tired. Oh, I'm sorry. Let, let's, let's do it again. Go ahead and go. Go. <laughs> You're not doing it. Let's do it again. <laughs> George, stop laughing. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm still recording. Just do it. Just do it. You're not doing it. <laughs> Fine, I'll do it for you. Hello, and welcome to Community Crow Weekly, the greatest online show. I'm George, and I'm Jeff. Thanks for tuning back in again this week, guys. We really appreciate it. See, was that so hard, George? Did what? you have to laugh through that entire thing? Not at all. It must have been the the uh, the freshly squeezed Florida orange juice. Must have had something in it. Ah, <sighs> forget it. Let's just start the show. It's time for Disney History. Main Street USA is the first theme land that you encounter after the main entrance of the many Disneyland style parks around the world. Now, each Main Street USA, with the exception of Tokyo Disneyland, has a train station right above the entrance. And at Disneyland, Disneyland Paris, Hong Kong Disneyland, uh, Sleeping Beauty Castle stands in the distance just beyond the end of the street, while at the Magic Kingdom and Tokyo Disneyland, Cinderella Castle stands at the end of the street. But Main Street is considered the opening credit for the theme parks. You pass under the train station, which acts as the opening curtain, and then you view the credits on the upper stories of the main buildings as you walk down the street. That's true, and you always get popcorn first thing. Usually. I usually get popcorn. That is true. And you have to. You have to. Well, anyway, so the original Main Street USA in Disneyland was inspired by Walt Disney's hometown of Marceline, Missouri. And it's designed to resemble, yeah, you know, a turn-of-the-century American town. And uh, some of the elements of Harper Goff's childhood home of Fort Collins, Colorado, are also incorporated into Main Street because when Goff showed some photos of it to Walt, he uh, Walt liked the look of it. And Walt Disney once said of Main Street, and I'm not going to try the accent or the impersonation, for those of us who remember the carefree time it recreates, Main Street will bring back happy memories. For younger visitors, is it an adventure in turning back the calendar to the days of their grandfather's youth? No, and and a time travel. It ooh, that is a time travel thing. I like that. Ooh, that's true. No, as you all along Main Street, there are names painted on the windows, which again are the opening credits we mentioned before. Now, as you already know, if you've heard one of the Windows of the Week segments before, these act as tributes to some of the many, many people. Are you singing? No, I wasn't singing the Windows of the Week bumper. No, you're a liar. Yeah, uh, my pants are en fuego. Ah, uh, I knew it. I knew it. Anyway, so like I was saying, these windows, they act as tributes to some of the many people, Imagineers, and others who contributed in some way to the creation of Disneyland. Now, most of them are fictional businesses that refer to a hobby or an interest that the person being honored enjoyed. And some of the windows aren't really tributes at all, but they're just there for show, and they, they're there to make this street feel like it's lived in by actual people. Above the firehouse at Disneyland is Walt Disney's personal apartment, which is fully furnished but off limits to the public. Uh, a lamp is kept burning in the front window as a tribute to his memory, except at Christmas uh, when a smaller tannenbaum replaces the lamp, uh, and it's decorated for both Halloween and Christmas. Uh, in Town Square, you'll find the oldest bi building in Disneyland, the Main Street Opera House, and it served as the park's lumber mill between 1955 and 1961. Can't imagine the noise and the dust that came out of that building. Yeah, that must have been ridiculous. And yeah, maybe they were like, we're building a new attraction. Yeah. Uh, so, and also the, the cannons. 
that are displayed in the center of the square were used by the French army during the 1800s, although they were never fired in battle. Go figure, I guess no major wars they went to. And the gas lamps that line the street originally came from Baltimore and were bought for three cents a pound. And uh, Main Street is actually listed as a real street in the Orange County Thomas Guide. Now, on the other coast is Main Street at Walt Disney World. Now, instead of it being a replica of a small Midwestern American town, this one features some stylistic influences from all around the country, such as New England and Missouri. Now, this was most noticeable in the Four Corners area of the middle of Main Street, where each of the four corner buildings represents a different architectural style. However, when the Emporium expanded, two of the corners went away, so there really isn't a center street anymore. Nah, yeah, sorry. I know. There is also no opera house like there is at Disneyland, but here instead there is an exposition hall. Uh, Main Street is also lined with shops selling merchandise and food. Now, this Main Street also includes a real barber shop where you can get a haircut right inside the Magic Kingdom, but I have never done that. Me neither, or, nor a shave. Hmm, I might have to do that next time. Yeah, get a shave before Splash Mountain, maybe? Hey, I'm okay with that. We're going to do a Communicore exclusive. <laughs> I'd like to get a Communicore, please. Oh, yes, a shave and a haircut. Oh, shave and a haircut. Splash Mountain. Yeah. Two dorks. So the uh, second stories of all the buildings <laughs> along Main Street are shorter than the first stories. And the third stories are even shorter than the second. And the resulting visual effect is that the buildings appear to be larger and taller than they really are. And the technique is also used at Disneyland and it gives the castle a much larger look even though it's only 189 feet tall. Of course, Cinderella's castle at Walt Disney World. Yes, yes. Now, the World Bazaar is the alternative of Main Street USA at Tokyo Disneyland, and it's covered by a glass Victorian-style conservatory roof to shield the guests from the Japanese weather. Now, amongst others, World Bazaar features a 1950s American diner. Uh, it also features the most eateries out of all the Main Streets, with three table service restaurants and four if you include Club 33. Um, and there's also a larger side street called Center Street that runs directly across Main Street, which exits onto either side into Tomorrowland or Adventureland. Now, this is the only Main Street that does not have a train station. So Disneyland Paris has a street that's themed slightly different from the others. The decor is more 1920s than turn of the century, uh, though the buildings are almost identical to those in Florida, with influences from the flapper and ragtime eras and an emphasis on baseball culture and the rise of the automobile. And instead of horse-drawn trolleys and Victorian vehicles, plans originally featured trams to fit with the 1920s theme, but they were scrapped. And also, due to the really cold and rainy weather in the area, there are covered walkways on either side of Main Street called Arcades. There's the Discovery Arcade on the side that's closest to Discovery Land, and then there's Liberty Arcade on the side that's closest to Frontierland. Now, these provide access to all the shops along the length of Main Street, and they also give shelter from the weather itself. Now, they're also, they provide a passageway when the street is really crowded during parades and fireworks. Now, the last one we're going to talk about is Hong Kong Disneyland, and that was inspired by the Main Street in Disneyland itself. The buildings there are almost identical to the ones that you can find in Anaheim. The plans originally featured a restaurant under the Hong Kong Disneyland Railroad Station, but they were scrapped at the last minute due to budget reasons. And the decor uh, is 20th century small town America from about the years 1890 to 1910. And, and though it's very, it's very similar to Anaheim's Main Street, the story of this street is heavily influenced by European immigrants. Uh, Plaza Inn, it has the same exterior design as the one in Anaheim, but its theme is about a wealthy American couple who traveled to China, fell in love with its culture and cuisine, and returned to create a classical Chinese eatery filled with all the decorations they collected on their journeys. And the Market House Bakery was founded by a Viennese pastry chef who brought some of the world's most famous desserts and coffee cakes from the Austrian Imperial Court. Now, instead of using stone as the major building material uh, like the other Main Streets, Main Street at Hong Kong Disneyland were built mainly out of wood, which is really rare in Hong Kong. Now, there are also no horse-drawn st street cards, uh, I'm sorry, street cars, and there is no partner statue in the street, although there are tracks for street cars that can be seen in early conceptual art. Now, my favorite Main Street, I think I'm gonna have to go with Disneyland now. Do you have a favorite one, George? Well, I mean, you know, the first love has to be the one at the Magic Kingdom just because of the scale and the size. And, you know, living on the East Coast, I like the Eastern Seaboard, but Seaboard, 
but I'm I'm completely captivated by the World Bazaar and the idea of it. But I really want to visit the arcades at Disneyland Paris. I think somebody should send us on trips there. I think so too. A Communicore funded, a Communicore trip funded by our lovely listeners. Yeah, maybe? let's let's do that. Or or Keith, so we can pay for the the ad at the Keith, beginning of the yes, show. Yes, yes. All right, if, all right, if, Keith. If we'll talk about that later then. Checks would stop bouncing. Exactly. He's a nerd. He's a, nerd. He's a, geek, He's a geek. But we all like to hear him speak. So listen up to the words from his speech. Ah! It's George's book of the week. When you've got a huge library like I do, yes, and it's over 800 books, and no, I'm not bragging, but um, humble brag. That <laughs> was a humble a brag. Of, that was a very humble brag. Yes, it was. Yep. You run across a lot of different books, and the track record for works of fiction that deal with the Disney park aren't that great. Um, you've got the Kingdom Keeper series, which is it's okay. You know, it's. I've enjoyed them, but I've had some problems with it. Uh, you've had the Peter and the Star Catchers, which doesn't start at Disney and is awesome, and then ends at Disney, which gets weird. Uh, and there's been a few other books that I've read and reviewed with, it, it just quite doesn't quite there, it misses the mark. Um, well, Jeff and I both received review copies of Disneylanders by Kate Abbott. And it's 185 pages and it was just published. and. This book is, is it's it's a young adult, it's a teen book, but you know, we're both grown men. We figured we could, you know, tear into it and see what it's like. And um, I'll be honest with you, I really, really, really like this book. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think it's I funny when we, we first started talking about it, like, with, you know, I think we were both kind of like close to the end of it and we were both dancing around the subject and then we were both we acted like giddy teenage girls for when we both revealed to each other that we did enjoy the book a lot <laughs> what, what i think is great about it is is kate um presents a story of a young girl who's making a transition from eighth to ninth grade because we've all been there and um, she's on her annual family trip with her family down to disneyland so that's the focus of the book but it's not the reason for the book. And that's probably the strength, is almost everything else you read that ties in any Disney theme park, they go after the theme park as being some sort of mythical, you know, there's a quest or there's some, you know, Walt Disney's frozen, you find him dripping and you've got to revive him. But this is just a story about a young girl who's trying to find herself. Yeah, it's, it's not a and, character in this book, it's the setting and I think Kate Kate mm -hmm. knows the park really well. I, it's fairly obvious in the book yes. that how well she knows the park. And, I mean, using it as the setting doesn't hinder the story at all. It enhances the story, um, and I think it makes for a, a very excellent backdrop for the, the story of, of young love, essentially. Yeah, and I think we both talked about at the beginning, it's sort of like, you know, we you know, had our uh, geek glasses on, and we're like, okay, you know, let's, let's make sure everything's right, and I'll be darned, I mean... Uh, she had her facts down and it's not a, it's not a current day it's back about 10 years and it was fairly historically accurate uh, for the details of disneyland so it was very impressive well done kate she did a good job with researching it obviously she's a huge disney geek which is great but but the story you know we mentioned you you follow this young girl she's having she's at her favorite place in the world with her parents getting ready to go to high school she's worried about how she looks who she is, what she's gonna do, um, worried about her parents embarrassing her, and then she meets a boy. So it's sort of like a girl goes to Disneyland, meets boy, and then lots of stuff happens. <laughs> you know, the, the way you're making it get this, this like sound, I'm sure some of our call, a core audience is like, I'm not gonna like this book because you know it's not targeted at you. I'm telling you, I enjoyed this yeah. book. Now, mm -hmm. granted, I like a lot of you know girly things i'm not gonna lie martina <laughs> tells me that all the time i still think the notebook and like a walk to remember are great movies okay but this book was it was really impressive disneylanders was a great book kate did yeah. an excellent job i think she's a fantastic writer and uh, to be honest with you i can't wait to see what she comes up with next oh agreed agreed so i guess what we're saying is you know give this book a chance it it may, may you may not fit the target audience but if you love disney theme parks you're gonna enjoy the background and the setting and, and she tells a great tale, and she's got great characters with really well done dialogue. You know, um, like I said, I think this is one that, that people are gonna enjoy. 
And finally, we get fiction within a Disney theme park that really works and works well. Yeah. Two thumbs up for Kate. Yes, two thumbs up for Kate. So this one is The Disneylanders by Kate Abbott. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. It's a debate. Who's gonna win it? I think at this point it's fairly obvious that our Disney debates are uh, more Disney agreeances, but we're going to go on with it anyway. Um, so this time, we're actually going to talk about the the latest Disney expansions for Walt Disney World and Disneyland. We're going to do Cars Land versus New Fantasyland. Oh, I thought and, we were talking about the dining plans. Oh, no, no, not not the dining plans. Not, not those. No, I'm sorry. Oh. oh. So you're not prepared is what you're saying. I'm always prepared. Sure, we'll go with that. Oh, go uh, with that. So, you, so you're saying you've been to Cars Land? <laughs> what? Yeah, that's what I thought. So... <laughs> <laughs> No, but I but I've seen your your your, uh, your videos. That's true. So it's almost like you've been there because I've, like been I've been there so much. Exactly. It's a, it's like vicariously. Well, considering the amount of time that the two of us spent in New Fantasyland um, when we were there back in uh, November, and how much time <laughs> I spent in Cars Land recently, I think at this point I think it's safe to make a fairly good judgment. Um, but what, 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 what are your wait. initial thoughts on, oh, on New wait. Fantasyland? So, all right. Well. You know, we uh, we both got to tour New Fantasyland, and we've been in and out of it before they officially opened it a couple times, which was nice. And I have humble to brag mention, again. That was a humble brag again. Yes, it was humble brag. Yes, New Fantasyland is is gorgeous through and throughout. Blown away by how beautiful it is, how nice it is. The the um, storybook circus part of it is, you know, almost perfect. It, it's it's so well done, except it's hot and. Actually, I don't know that Casey Jr. Uh, splash and soak is kind of stupid, but that's okay. Um, so, you know, it's gorgeous, but there's nothing really to do there. That's the problem. Whereas with Cars Land, you've got some pretty large, you got a pretty large e-ticket over there. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's kind of not fair because the, the new Seven Dwarfs Mine Coaster is not open and complete yet, but mm. by all accounts, looking at it, at what, what you know, the videos they've released of what it's going to be, there is no way it's going to be the same type of caliber ride that the Radiator Springs Racers uh, is no. here no. at I mean, uh, California yeah. Adventure. Yeah, Little Mermaid, you know, we've talked about that. That's a It's a fantastic D-ticket. It's a great dark ride. Dark rides really can't be anything better than a D ticket. Um, and you've got cars. Uh, you've got Raider Springs Racers, which is that E ticket at, at, at Cars Land, but you've got nothing else major. And even when they bring the Seven Dwarfs Mine Coaster, it's probably going to be a D ticket. You know, it's going to be more intense than Goofy's Barnstormer, but less intense than Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Yeah, and you but, know what? Even with the the b or c tickets that they have at cars land now you know being um luigi's flying uh tires or tigers if you're tigers. our friend like Teresa Corey, or, yeah. or and uh the i'm sorry the mater's junkyard jamboree i mean those are great little attractions side attractions they're not major ones obviously they're not e-tickets but they still mm -hmm. add a lot to the atmosphere of the land itself but the main draw is the radiator springs racers and i think that alone on its own kicks new fantasy land to the curb yeah. Now, now, when we talk about e-ticket attractions, you know, you can look at it another way too. You know, the Imagineers and the people that plan Walt Disney World, you know, as much as we might like to uh, <laughs> call them not so smart, you know, they built one of you know Walt Disney World's largest restaurants with the expansion. You know, food is a huge part of a Walt Disney World vacation. You know, uh, so you've got the Br Guest Restaurant. You know, the first eatery that doubles. You know, does you know counter service or quick service for lunch, and then you know full sit down for dinner. And it's not to take away from the restaurant; it's a great restaurant. It's gorgeous. Yeah. The food is great. There's a lot of great atmosphere. But it, you know, it's not the you can't have a restaurant be the main attraction of a no. new expansion. Exactly, exactly, exactly. You know, because we were talking, you know, before the segment, going, well, yeah, what about the restaurants? You know, <laughs> so the Fantasyland does have more eateries, but by like one. 
So I think by one, if that. I maybe they one. might even be even at this point. I don't know. Maybe I'm counting incorrectly, but um, well, it depends on how many of the little food carts. <laughs> yeah, we can count the food carts if you want to. Uh, Flow you know. Super Eight Cafe is, you know, I ate there a couple weeks ago, and it was fantastic. Um, I, it was probably one of the best quick service meals I've ever had at a Disney theme park. So wow, I, I, I was really impressed. I was I was really impressed. So what what are you gonna give it to? Well, I think we've got to go with Cars Land. Even though I haven't been there, you know, I've, I've lived vicariously, I've seen it. it. It's it seems like it was just done with a a, a better end point, and you know, it, it, the Imagineers were given a ton of money to do the new Fantasyland redo, but there's nothing there that's really drawing people at this point in time. Whereas you've got people traveling across the country to visit Cars Land, All and right. that's the purpose of it. So we're gonna you know? chalk it up for for Disneyland. Disneyland yeah. wins this one. Yeah, don't tell Keith. All right, we'll, we'll keep this one a secret from him. Yeah, we'll have to. Sometimes you might see it, sometimes you don't. Hey, look, what's that? It's a five-legged goat. <laughs> now, we've covered the largest hidden Mickey at Walt Disney World before, but did you know where the largest footprint in a Disney park is? And I mean quite literally the largest footprint, like an actual footprint. Now, you're going to be surprised, but here it is. It's at the Jungle Cruise at Disneyland. No, <gasps> I know you were surprised. Wait, that was, was a good surprise to... voice, George. I'm, I'm very. Well, proud I was trying of you. to do sound effects. Yeah, you've been practicing. Good I've job, George. You get I've a cookie practicing. when we're done. <laughs> good boy. Good boy. Anyway, so while doing the layout of the Jungle Cruise, Harper Goff used a actual sandbox to finalize the details of the attraction itself and to try to figure out the size for footprint of the ride. Now, Harper used his actual footprint to sculpt the sand into the shape of the river and its banks, therefore making it the largest actual footprint in a Disney theme park. Well, thanks so much for watching, listening, and absorbing the show. And don't forget, there's still time to enter the Communicore Weekly Blu-ray Bonanza giveaway. Just go to CommunicoreWeekly.com to get the details. That's right, and be sure to leave us a comment or rate us on iTunes and there you go. Enter into the contest. Exactly. And don't forget to email us at communicoreweekly at gmail.com if you want to remind us that you entered the contest or to send us awesome photos. Yes, we love photos. We love photos. Exactly. You can also like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash communicoreweekly. Mm -hmm. Or follow us both on Twitter. I'm at Imagineerding and he's at Jeff Heimbuck. And for Jeff Heimbuck, I'm George Taylor. And for George Taylor, I'm Jeff Heimbuck. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you next time on CommuniCore Weekly, the greatest online show. And see, George, it's not so hard to say the greatest online show. That's the line. I'm not. <laughs>